Ever since the UK government added domiciliary care workers, senior care assistants, home care workers, care assistants, etc. to the UK's shortage occupation list, many people across the world have taken this opportunity to relocate to the UK. Um, people from Africa, people from Asia, other parts of Europe, the Caribbean. So many people have taken advantage of this opportunity to relocate to the UK. Many of these people that are relocating to the UK to work as carers and care assistants, they actually have plans of upgrading or switching from care assistant work or senior care work to become nurses okay i get so many questions in my dm my emails of people asking me if it's actually possible and what the process is like so in today's video i'm going to explain all the possible routes that people who are care assistants can become nurses in the uk all the possible routes the ones that are free the ones that you have to pay how much you have to pay etc i'm going to delve into all the possible routes that care assistants in the uk can use to become nurses in the uk UK. so if you're interested stay tuned <laughs> So yes, it's very possible for care assistants to become nurses in the UK. All care assistants, if you really want to switch to become a nurse, or let me say, for lack of a better word, to upgrade to become a nurse, it is possible. It is very, 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 very possible. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the different routes like I mentioned earlier. Let me say that there are about four categories of people that are taking advantage of this opportunity to relocate to the UK as care workers or as care assistants or as senior carers. There are four categories categories of people that are coming to the UK through this route okay so, so the first category is those that are nurses back home they are actually qualified nurses back home but they are relocating to the UK to work as care workers or care assistants basically because they're unable to get the required IELT score or the required OET score to register as nurses to join the NMC of UK so most of them they've already started their process of becoming nurses in the UK but they could not pass the IELTS or they could not get the required score for the IELTS or the OET so that's why they decided to come to the UK as senior care workers or as domiciliary care workers and in the hope of switching to be a nurse in the feature so that's the first category of people i think that's the most popular category okay the second category of people they are also nurses but their nursing school lasted for some of them one year or 18 months or two years so they did not qualify to register to become nurses in the uk because usually your nursing school should have lasted for three years so that you can be able to join the nmc of uk's register to become a nurse so for those people to when they tried applying the nmc did not accept their application because the school was let's say an 18 month course or a 12 month course or a two year course of nursing so they were not accepted they have a nursing background but they don't have a diploma or they don't have a degree in nursing they only have a certificate or something to show that they have a nursing background but they are sort of like enrolled nurses but not really like diploma nurses or degree nurses so they are also not able to come to the uk to work as nurses so they also want to take opportunity to come through this route so that's the second category of people and they are also quite a lot and then the third category of people are those that do not have any health background they don't have any nursing background but they have a degree in other fields okay they have a degree in other fields and then the fourth category of people that are coming through this route are those that they are not nurses they do not have um, a degree they do not have a diploma and let's say they only have their O levels or they only have their WASI results and they have been fortunate to move to the UK to work as senior carers or as healthcare assistants. So those are the four main categories of people. For all these categories of people, the main thing you have to think about to, if you have plans of switching to become a nurse or upgrading to become a nurse once you get to the UK. Guys, don't be offended when I say upgrade. It's not like nurses are better off. No, it's just for the lack of a better word, okay? Uh, the main thing that you're supposed to consider is the contract okay so i have a video where i listed the step-by-step -step process for those that want to come to the uk to work as a senior care worker or a care assistant i have a video where i listed the step-by-step -step process you should have a look at it in that process you know that at a point in time when you pass your interview your employer or your prospective employer will give you a contract to sign or will give you an agreement to sign bear in mind that this is a legal document so if you append your signature you've agreed to everything that's on the document and if you do not play your part parts are stated in the agreements your employer has every right to take legal actions against you so it's a legal document so you have to make sure you know what it entails before you sign okay so then that's the main thing that you have to consider the contract what it is saying usually you are bonded to your employer for three years okay 
for instance myself on my agreement four years ago my employer said that Nanel, we are spending so much on you so you have to work for us for three years however Nanel, if you say you can't work for us for three years you'd have to give us some of the money back so let me show you my contract then you have an idea of what a contract looks like okay so this is a copy of my contract and let's have a look these were the things that they were paying for me this is about four years ago as you can see the date was 13 september 2018 and as i always say i always praise mma for bringing me to the uk that was the agency i used so let's get to the details okay they said paid one-way flight to the uk up to 550 pounds hotel or b and b accommodation for the first two weeks 400 for my first month rent paid academic IELTS. in fact did all these things that they did for me okay and they said that so they are bonding me for three years okay reimbursement of relocation expenses will be based on a sliding scale as follows so my company actually gave me what we call a sliding scale okay which i think is reasonable so they said that the number of weeks in employment so they said that if i come to work for them and i work for only six months I will pay 100% of all the money they spent on me. The amount they said they spent was £3,710. So they said that when I come to work for them, and after the first six months, I said I'm going, I would have to pay the full amount of the £3,710. Then they continue to say that if you work for us between six, 26 weeks to 52 weeks, that's you know between six months to 12 months you would pay 70 percent so if i leave within the first year but after six months i'll pay 70 percent of the 3710 then they said if i leave between 52 to 104 weeks i'll pay 50 percent of the 3710 and if i leave after two years but less than like three years that's within three years i was going to pay only 25% of their 3,710 pounds. I put my signature because I thought it was a good deal. And truth is, when I came, I've worked for them for the three years. I didn't go anywhere. And even after the three years, I renewed my contract with them. Just that this time around, because there was no flight and nothing, they just renewed my contract without giving me these things, okay? So they are basically saying that it's not fair that I know we've spent so much on you. So if you are going, we'd have to bring somebody to replace you. So we can't pay your flights and do all these things for you or skip blah 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 and then you go like that so you pay this amount that's what i've explained so you have to look at your contract every employer is different they give different contracts so i don't know the kind of employer that you are going to get some contracts i've seen are very bad there's a lady who showed me her contract and she was supposed to work for the company for five years they bonded her for five years and if she has to leave before the five year ends they were expecting her to pay eight thousand pounds that's unrealistic okay so you have to check the contract and see if it's something that's reasonable because remember that you have plans of switching to become a nurse once you get to the uk and you want to do that as soon as you can so if you are being asked to stay with that employer for five years and if you intend to leave you are going to pay eight thousand pounds which is unrealistic then you should think twice about signing such a contract because of the plans that you have i hope you understand also there's a guy who came to the uk as a senior carer he told his employer he was honest in his interview he said I'm only doing this because I'm unable to get the required IELTS score. But as soon as I get my required IELTS score, I would like to proceed to become a nurse in the UK. The employer was very good. The employer told him that we are waiting for you. If you're able to pass your IELTS for the nurses and pass your OSCE, we are not going to support you with the OSCE training and everything. But if you're able to do that on your own, we will employ you as a nurse in our own company so we will just change a few things in the contract and we will inform the home office or the immigration that you are no more working for us as a carer but you are now a nurse so we will update your details but we will employ we will still employ you so that's a good employer so you can also let your employer be aware once you get to the uk you can let them be aware that what happens if i become a nurse are you willing to change some parts of my contract and still stay so these are the things that you have to consider the contract because it's a legal document and once you sign you're supposed to follow it that's the thing okay and some of the employers are actually taking advantage of people and giving them very 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 tight conditions you know so check to see if the conditions of your contract are, are reasonable and you can follow it easily okay so those are the main things that you have to check now let's go to those that are nurses but are not able to pass the aisle so they are coming through this route guys it's easy honestly if 
if you are in the UK as a care assistant or as a domiciliary care, but you back home, you're a nurse and you want to switch, this is what you have to do. You are going to do the exact same thing that you would have done in your country to become a nurse in the UK. The exact same thing. The process is the same. I have a video on that. You are going to create an account with the NMC of UK. You are going to do your eligibility or qualification evaluation where you submit your evidence of your schooling, blah, blah, blah. And then you pay the £140. They'll go and check to see if everything is okay. They'll give you authorization to take the CBT. You take the CBT. You submit other evidences of your health. Then you do the IELTS. You submit your language evidence. You do the IELTS or the OET. And then you pay £150 for the registration fee. And then you do your OSCE, partial OSCE, and then you get your PIN. The process is the exact same thing. However, this time around, if you have not already written your CBT, you sit for the CBT in the UK. If you have not already passed the IELTS, now you write the IELTS or the OET in the UK. And there are so many test centers in the UK. I will leave links in the description, okay, to find the nearest IELTS test center and to find the nearest CBT test center, okay? So let's say you are now working as a carer in Birmingham or London somewhere. You haven't written your CBT, but you want to write the CBT to become an S. When you use the link in the description, you type in where you live, all the nearest CBT test centers will come so that you can, you know, just book there once you are ready. I'll do the same for the IELTS or the OET test centers as well so that you can find the nearest one to where you are currently and then register or book. So you book your OSCE and then you pass your OSCE and then, you know, you get your PIN. The only issue is that because you don't have a contract with your employer for them, you know, helping you pass the OSCE, you would have to do private OSCE lessons. So many people have done private OSCE lessons and have passed the OSCE. So I'll give you a few of very good private OSCE tuition companies so that you can check them online. The first one which is my favorite is Ace International. However, I think they have a problem with their website at the moment. So you can check on them later. Oh, the second one is IELTS Medical. Then there's Mental Merlin. There's Charcos. There are so many of them. I can actually do a video of the top 10 um, private OSCE um, tuition centers so that you can register with any of them and start your OSCE preparation, okay? Privately, so many success stories, so many, okay? So you have to do your private OSCE training and then do the OSCE, book your OSCE, sit for your OSCE and then pass and get your PIN. And once you get your PIN, it's so easy. You can either change your job title or your job description from care assistant to nurse at the same work that you are doing if your employer wants to employ you as a nurse or you can switch employers and look for another employer who is willing to give you a new certificate of sponsorship so that you can work for them however you have to apply for another visa because now your employer is changing you apply for another visa but you apply for it within the uk and it's so fast you get it easily you get it fast okay so for those that are nurses this is actually the way to go it's the same process these are the rest of the things you'd have to do them in the uk however the challenge will be that you know you'd have to do verification from your home country okay so because you have to do verification from your home country let's say and then your school so let's say you need some documents from your school where you had your nursing training and then from the nursing council in your country so those paperwork that you have to submit to these bodies or these institutions you'd have to let a friend or a relative in your home country do those things for you because at the moment you're in the uk practicing as a carer so you'd have to get somebody in your home country to submit those forms for you for your clearance to be done and all that so the things that have to be done in the home country you would have to let somebody do them for you but the rest of the process you can do them here simple as that another challenge for those that are already nurses is that their cbt might expire so if you've already written your cbt okay remember cbt has two years expiry and once you start you're supposed to complete the process in, in two years so if your cbt is expiring and your employer is also saying that the contract is for two years that could be the issue okay so um that is the main challenge most people may have to write cbt again that is if you have already written your cbt before you came to the uk to work as a senior care unless you are fast with the process you may have to write the cbt again that's another challenge as well now let's go to the second category okay so i'm not going to talk much about the second category for the second category of people these are the people like i said they have some sort of nursing training but they are not qualified to become nurses in the uk because they don't have a three-year nursing education or their nursing course was less than three years you can either start afresh as a nurse and go to school in the uk or you can try and see if your qualification meets the requirements to become a nursing associate in the uk you can either start afresh start nursing school afresh in the uk or probably 
most likely, especially those that did two years in school, maybe you can use your qualification as an enrolled nurse or a community nurse back in your home country to apply to become a nurse associate in the UK, not an adult nurse. So nurse associates are band four nurses. You know, the UK, the nursing levels are arranged in bands. So band one is the least, then band two, then band three, then band four, then band five. So I'm a band five nurse, and then you can get promoted to do band six, band seven, band eight, band nine, which is the highest, okay? So for you guys, you are not going to be band five. You're going to be band four. And usually they work for NHS Trust. So a band four nurse or a nurse associate, it was just recently introduced. They do everything that a band five nurse can do. However, they are not allowed to give IV medication. So they are just like band five nurses, but they are not allowed to do IV medication and make, you know, some um, serious decisions and all that today. But they do most of the things that band five nurses do. So that's what you can do they have their own test of competence that's like they have their own sort of cbt you'd also have to write ielts and all those things i'm going to do a separate video where i can explore exactly the pathway to become a nurse associate in the uk for those that are yet to come to the uk for those that are already in the uk and want to become nurse associates and if you are a nurse associate and you want to become a band five there's some schools that allow you to do an 18 months course or a two years course to become a band five nurse you understand they also have a pin they join the nmc register they have their you know their license and all that there was a lady that i used to talk to on my telegram please if you're watching me please contact me again please or comment below she was able to register as a nurse associate from ghana and I, there's so many people that send me messages so i've lost her name i've lost her number but i wish i could you know ask her more questions and do a proper video on that okay so that's it so i'll do a proper video on the next associate route so now let's talk to those that have a degree in other fields okay but they are not nurses so for you guys your best bet is to do the fast track nursing course okay when i say fast track nursing course i mean the pre-registration adult nursing or mental health nursing so i have a video where i did with a lecturer a uk lecturer i'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out where he was basically talking about the requirement so the uk has introduced a fast track nursing program it's called msc pre-registration either adult or mental health or major field whatever that you want to do it's just two years it's a two years program and i even hear some schools do it for 18 months instead of two years it doesn't matter where your qualification is from it doesn't matter even if you did engineering if you have a degree you can apply for this two years program and become a nurse after that you don't need OSCE you don't need CBT right after that you get your pin just that because it's a two years course obviously just like any university you do end of semester exams and those things and after the course you are a nurse in the UK that's your best bet honestly because that's the fastest and then the easiest way however you may still be required to write IELTS for most of the schools. They may ask you to write IELTS. The fees is quite expensive. It's about 15,000 plus for most of the schools. But the good thing is that they'll need you to have some kind of like work placement experience. And because you're already working in the UK as a carer, you'd already have that experience. Okay, so you can use your experience working as a UK carer to apply, which is very, very good. But the only challenge is the fees. A university like University of Huddersfield, they have a blended program so you don't necessarily have to be in the school you can they will give you most of the things to study online most of your courses will be online and then once in a while you can meet on campus so their own is flexible it's usually online it's a blended learning program it's usually online so what people don't know is that if you come to the uk as a care worker you are on a tier 2 visa or a health and care worker visa if you're on a health and care worker visa you are allowed to school the government has given you the permission to school as well just that your school should not interfere with your work. If your contract is 44 hours per week, that means you're working approximately four days a week and each day is about 12 hours. If that's your contract, do not give an excuse that you can't work. Don't call your employer to say you can't work because you have a lecture. No, if you do that, you are breaching the conditions of your visa you can go to school as long as it does not affect your work because you are here to work you are on a worker visa you are not on a student visa so you, you can do this two years nursing program the challenge is the fees and the fact that you'll be working full-time and schooling as well and you have to pay the fees just that the uk they are so good that sometimes they can allow you to pay a deposit and then you can pay certain bits every month let me say that if you are coming with your partner one person can be working to pay the bills in the house and the other person will use the money to pay the fees 
okay so it's possible and this is good investment it's investing into your own future and then after that you're going to reap the benefits you can do all the next shifts in the world and then you can make money so for those that have no health background but have a degree in other fields this is your best bet the msc pre-registration programs okay now let's talk about the large group of people these are the people that do not have any health background they too they don't have degree some may not even have a diploma in any any sector for you guys either you start nursing school afresh in the uk which is three years full time like i said if you come through this route you are allowed to go to school so either you do the three years full time and when i checked online for instance university of Huddersfield, their fees for international students is about eighteen thousand per year and you are going to be doing this full time for three years also make sure that the schooling is, does not affect your work because you are first of all here because of the work if you can afford eighteen thousand per year that's your best bet you can do that but it's possible if you are coming with your partner like one person can work and foot the bills for the home the groceries and then the utility bills and all that and the other person will use their money purposely for the fees you're going to be happy you did i think is a good investment in my opinion so for those that do not have you may have to start from the scratch however there's another method that may require you not to pay anything let me talk about it so there's a program called the nurse apprenticeship program okay so guys i'll do a detailed video on, on how to use this routes to come to the uk the nurse apprenticeship degree program okay i'll do a detailed video but it's basically you know some nhs trust they really really help their band three nurses or band two nurses or even sometimes anybody at all to upgrade or to switch to become nurses in their trust okay so this usually happens with nhs trust when i read online during my research for this video they said some care homes actually can help you as well but i haven't seen any care home that will actually sponsor you to go to school to become a nurse so some of the trusts they are so good that they help their you know even sometimes the cleaners to become nurses in the uk so what they do is that you know, first of all if you are employed in that particular trust and you want to do that you have to make sure you've established your interest okay so after your six months of probation let's say you establish your interest if there's a position like that you can apply but before you apply certain criteria you have to meet so to qualify to do this program you should have at least gotten a c in maths and english in your gcsc so the gcses is like your wasi for those from west africa or your o levels from those from southern africa so it's something like that you should have gotten at least c in maths and english before you can even you know do this program but if you do not do your wasi or your gcsc there's something called functional skills they can it's a program that they can accept as well so they will assess you and then you'll see your strength and then they'll do a short course for you and then you can get that before you apply it's also usually three months so either your wasi or your o levels or your gcsc where you should not have gotten less than c in english and or maths or the functional skills level two where it's a short course for about three months okay you also need something called a level three qualification so a level three qualification can be an access course or whatever whatever after you realize that you have these things then you can apply for the next apprenticeship programs there are so many of them on track dot jobs the lady from ghana actually got this um next apprenticeship program from ghana actually they were employed here from ghana to come and do that program here and with this program as you are working as a carer but usually in a hospital you will be going to school as well so you'll be doing the next apprenticeship degree program okay after you apply you don't do an interview and if you pass the interview then you can start the program so you'll be schooling and then you'll be working as well so it's quite good and it's free it is funded by the trust it's actually free so it's usually four years okay if you want to become a nurse but some people can do it for two years when you do the two years you can become a nurse associate so we also have one for to become a nurse associate so that one is an apprenticeship program to become a nurse associate those are the nurses that are banned for and do not do um iv medication and um, that one to you do only two years remember the nurse degree apprenticeship program Program, it is four years but if you want to become a nurse associate it's two years after that if you want to top up you can do a top up and become um, a band five nurse but a top up could either be 18 months or two years okay but this is usually funded by hospitals so if you are coming to work in a care home you are unlikely to get this offer okay but this is absolutely free and after that you will become a nurse in the uk in the same trust and anywhere else if you want to move from that trust so that is it these are the main ways that you can switch from being a carer to become a nurse another option is that you can actually stay in the uk for five years and work for your employer 
as a senior carer. After five years, you're eligible to apply for permanent residency. And if you have permanent residency or if you're a citizen in the UK, you pay something they call home fees. And home fees is usually cheaper. So when you are paying £18,000, a fellow British citizen will be paying just £5,000. Okay, so you can also decide to wait and get your permanent residency before you go to school. And then after that, you know that you'll be paying very, like, very small fees, which you can pay easily. So it depends on you right <laughs> so that is it these are the main ways but i promise to do a video into detail on the nurse degree apprenticeship program and a detailed video on how you can come to the uk to work as a nurse associate okay so if you are interested in these videos in any way like this video and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications so when i upload that video you'll be notified okay thank you so much for watching bye did i already tell you guys my wig is from natural girl wigs it's really nice you can order with the link in the description don't forget to use the promo code Nanel. Okay.